Hi, I'm Abby Longstaff and I write the fairy tale hairdress books together with Lauren Beard who does the drawing. Um, this is our new one, The Fairy Tale Hairdresser and the Little Mermaid. Um, it's another story about the adventurous Kitty Lacey and how she manages to fix all the world's problems. And this time she's helping Coral, the Little Mermaid, who's desperate to be part of the human world. And when Kitty first meets her, she, Coral wants to be a singer. She doesn't like her tail. She doesn't like being a mermaid. But over the course of the book, Coral begins to realise that actually she does like her tail after all and it's not always great to want to be something that you're not. Kitty Lacey is a businesswoman. She runs her salon herself and she lives above it in this cute little funky flat. And she's kind of at the heart of the community. She's a bit of a fixer, an organiser. She's really adventurous and brave. She doesn't mind going underwater with diving outfits, chasing down wicked witches in caves, or, or fighting evil queens who are up to no good. She's, she's a real adventure girl, and she likes to solve all kinds of problems. And people come to see her for comfort, for friendship, but also to fix things in their lives. When I thought about how to adapt the fairy tale world, there were elements of it that I wanted to keep and elements that I was concerned about. I mean, in traditional fairy tales, often the sort of Disney-fied version, the girls tend to be all about finding the prince and looking beautiful and going out to the ball. And that was one element that I didn't really want to keep all of in my books. I wanted very much the theme that you can look nice for yourself and it's about your own confidence and your own image and how you feel. Um, and so I was really careful when I was writing the books to make sure that everyone who has their hair cut has it almost out of need. Rapunzel has it cut because she's stuck in a tower. Um, Snow White has it coloured because she's in disguise. The Little Mermaid, the shampoo goes on to take away the spell that the Wicked Witch has put on. I wanted that kind of feel of it's not all about being pretty. And a lot, I made sure a lot of boys as well have their hair cut, um, beards cut, the seven dwarfs come in for their beards and Father Christmas with sideburns and everything. So I wanted that kind of feel that it's boy and girl inclusive. I also wanted to modernise the world so that it wasn't all girls in big puffy dresses and royals being very abstract from common folk. So all my princes, they tend to have jobs. I've got, you know, Dr. Charming, he's, um, he's a doctor and a prince. Prince Florian in, um, in the Sleeping Beauty book is a gardener, a royal gardener and the prince. And I kind of, I like that feel that it's very much about community. But what I did like about fairy tales is this sense of the village of people and I quite like that crossover where Cinderella can walk past Red Riding Hood or the big bad wolf can be actually chatting to the three little pigs and I just I like that the world of it so I wanted to keep that angle and when um, I write the books I think very carefully about what element of the traditional tale to keep and which one not. Um, for Cinderella I had a bit of a problem with it because Cinderella she dresses up to go to the ball and the prince really falls in love with her because she looks a rich and b beautiful so much so that when she's not in the ball she's in her normal rags he has to make her try a shoe on to see who she is because he doesn't even recognize her when she's not rich and beautiful and that was an element i really wanted to lose so i thought hard about trying to find a way to make cinderella go to the ball and, and meet the prince without all the kind of doing up. And so I had my Cinderella meets her prince when she's poor and she's working for Kitty Lacey and she's there doing the Queen of Hearts hair um, and she bumps into the prince and he loves her then and he says, you know, come to the ball with me. And, and I like that feel. And in the, the spread where they're dancing together and they fall in love, she says to him, this isn't even my dress. And I wanted to make that clear that she hasn't dressed up, she's borrowed someone else's stuff, she's not, she doesn't usually look like that. And so at the end, in the very end of the book, Cinderella's back in the salon in her ordinary clothes, she's working in the salon, and the prince is there too, working. And, and that was a, a kind of theme that I wanted. So I'm going to read you the first few pages just to give you a sneak peek. Kitty Lacey was the best hairdresser in all the land. Every day her salon was filled with customers waiting to have their hair done, their whiskers dyed and their manes permed. Sometimes her customers came to her and sometimes she went to them. Once a month, Kitty visited her friend, Coral, 
the Little Mermaid. Coral lived in a beautiful castle deep at the bottom of the ocean. Kitty loved learning all about the underwater world. There were so many wonderful things to see. In return, Coral liked Kitty to tell her all about the human world. She swam to the surface as often as she could. The Little Mermaid had a beautiful voice and she loved to sit on the rocks and sing. But one day, Kitty found her singing a sad song. What's wrong? asked Kitty. Oh, Kitty, Coral cried. I wish I could be human like you. It looks like so much fun. And there's someone special I'd really like to meet. The mermaid looked down. But what would he think if he saw my tail?